Gut health is so important for us. You know, there are so many studies that have showed the link between immune disorders, our mood, mental health, skin conditions, cancer, linked to gut health. I am super lucky tonight because, well actually, you guys are super lucky because I have Four Wheels Health guru, nutritionalist here to come on board with me and talk gut health. We've got a bit of stuff lined up here. I'm going to show you two different bone broths. So easy to make. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of foods that are really good for our gut. And then I'm going to do, well, I'm going to cook Sean some dinner, actually. And I'm going to show you guys as well how you can make a bone broth into something exceptional. Bone broth is super good for our children. So we need to understand all the different things that cause Bad gut, bacteria, bad gut bacteria. But first of all, let's get Sean over here and introduce you guys to him. Sean, nutritionist, four wheels of health course, expert. Here he is. Oh, stop. I was actually just having a trouble getting my mic started. But anyway, thank you everyone for having me on. Thank you, Simon, for so generously offering to cook me some dinner. It's not every time you get uh, Simon Gold to cook you a meal. Um, yeah, very, very cool to be here in my favorite topic in health actually is, is gut health. It's kind of the, almost the new science in, mm. in health, isn't it? And, you know, like we've got this rainforest inside us and my understanding of it is that we get all of this highly processed and refined food and certainly in New Zealand, a lot of us eat a lot of, you know, processed food, which instead of just cooking good old mushrooms, or things that don't require a label, right? If it doesn't need a label in the supermarket, then it's whole food. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, a corn on the cob doesn't need a label. But if they turn it into corn in a can, it needs a label, right? And then they need preservatives in it, E numbers. And then if they turn that cream corn into a corn chip... Oh, it's just a rabbit hole, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. just <laughs> ultra-processed and highly refined. And those foods are damaging our gut bacteria. So you imagine you've got this rainforest inside you. And you know, if it was a rainforest outside and an airplane flew along and dropped a whole bunch of napalm on it, and it only landed on one side of the forest, it would kill a lot of the things in the forest. But the other part of the forest that didn't get hit probably wouldn't survive because it needs all those other things to make it work. And if we eat this highly processed and refined food, we're kind of napalming our gut bacteria. If Sean was a hundred little molecules, right? But he's not, he's billions, right? But if he was a hundred, trillions, <laughs> you know, 90% of them would actually be gut bacteria. It is the biggest thing going mm. on in our body. Yeah, to give you, to give you some numbers, you, you're watching this and you've got about 10 trillion cells that are all coming together to make you work. But there's actually over 100 trillion bacterial cells inside your body. So you are actually more bacteria than you are you. So who's really in control? So how do you know if you've got bad gut bacteria, right? How do you know if your microbiome's healthy? I mean, you know, if you've got get bloating or you get diarrhea, abdominal pains, mm. nausea. These are all signs that maybe your gut health isn't great. But if your skin isn't good, that's a sign of poor yeah, yeah. gut health, right? Yeah. There's the very obvious things like if you have, you know, if you have issues with your gut and you're aware of it, it's probably to do with your gut health. But there's all the external signs as well that people don't really think about. So your energy levels, your your uh, the quality of your skin, uh, how well you're sleeping, your physical performance with exercise, uh, even your cholesterol levels when you go and get a blood test done, that can be a very strong indicator of your gut health as well. Your gut health, your gut is your engine, right? You've got your body, that's your vehicle. Your gut is your engine. And if your engine isn't functioning very well, you can't expect the, the rest of the vehicle to, to take you very far or have a smooth ride. 
right? So that's kind of the way I like everyone to look at it. It's your engine, you take care of it. The bacteria are the mechanics, all right? They're the things that keep your engine running smoothly. Yeah, what are some other signs of, you know, poor gut health that, you know, you might, if people are out there trying to decide right now, is, have I got good gut health? Could, could they start looking at how much sugar they have? Because mm, sugar is absolutely. like yeah. really napalming your gut health. So maybe we should talk a little bit about sugar, right? Mm. I mean, there are hundreds, if not thousands of names to disguise sugar, right? We know there's white sugar, there's high fructose corn syrup, there's, yeah, you know, yeah, there's yeah. just there's so many so names that on labels people use, hoping we don't recognize it as sugar. But yeah. what does it do to the gut? Well, sugar, specifically for your gut health and specifically for your gut bacteria, is the main fuel source for the bad gut bacteria. And essentially they use it as food to grow, proliferate, and they end up producing toxins. Um, they end up causing depression chemically in your brain, uh, and that's because your brain and your gut are very, very strongly linked. Um, but they actually also end up producing alcohol out of the sugar as well. So sugar is a really good way to fertilize the bad bacteria, which does you no good whatsoever. And of course it's even worse, it's a double whammy, because the more you feed the bad bacteria and they grow, the less room and resources your good bacteria have. So. I like to say, love your bacteria, and they'll love you. And by that, I mean your good bacteria. If you're feeding the bad ones, you're really taking away from the good ones that actually want to help you. Uh, so and then if you feed no them sugar, right? They go, ooh, yum, 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 yum. And you get the, what's it, you know, you get sugar cravings. Mm. Your you sugar know? cravings are not yours. They are your gut bacteria. Yeah. They are crying out for food. So when you get a sugar craving, it's not you. It's not because you don't have willpower or you're, you're weak and you want to give in to the chocolate bar. It's your gut bacteria. It's the bad ones calling out for food and because they're starving, essentially. But if you clean that up, if you remove a lot of those bad gut bacteria, those cravings go away. Quite simple. So it's interesting. When I did Why Are We Fat, we met with some scientists, researchers in Australia. And they did a study of 7,000 people who were suffering from mm. depression. And of those 7,000 people, they split them into two groups. So 3,500 went with Sean, or somebody like Sean, who was a nutritionist who specialised in getting all the right foods, the sauerkrauts, and f feeding their gut, good, good things. And then the other three and a half thousand people went with a shrink and, you know, to see how they could go. And the result was that the three and a half thousand that went with the nutritionists were the ones that got the best result in getting rid of their depression. Mm. So a lot of people that are depressed, you find that, you know, they have meals of a lot of white bread. There's no nutrition in white bread. There's no mm. fiber in white bread. One slice of white bread has one gram of fiber in it. It's terrible for you. You see these people drinking these V drinks and high energy drinks that's just massive sugar. And they, you know, that is just contributing to the depression. And New Zealand has a massive problem with depression, as mm. we all know but food is not taken seriously enough mm. as how important it is and how it can cure depression. Absolutely, because a lot of the, if you're feeling blue, to put it in, in you know, very simple terms, you're not feeling great, a lot of the time it's a chemically induced uh, state of you know, not feeling well. It's literally chemicals in your brain that are causing you to not feel well and that stems from your gut health in general because there's a there's a pathway of communication between your gut which is the second biggest brain in the body and the brain up here and 90% of the communication is from the gut brain to this brain so 90% of 
the messages between the two biggest brains in the body is your gut brain telling your head brain what to do. All these bacteria in your gut, they are going to have a direct influence on the brain down there, which then talks to the one up here, which is why your behavior and how you feel is so manipulated because of your gut health. Uh, and it, it goes very, very deep down the rabbit hole into serotonin, dopamine, um, cytokines. There's a lot of different big words and fancy chemicals that alter our state of being. Uh, but the bottom line is, if you have a non-dysbiosis, so you have a good balance in the gut health, you're not only going to be healthier, but you're, you're going to, in general, you're going to feel really, really good. And people are going <laughs> to wonder why, what, what, are, what are you taking uh, to be so perky all the time? But it, if you've got simply, good gut health, gut health, you're going to be happy. Because, like, you know, if I can sort of translate from your sciencey absolutely take on it, and so in your gut, 85 to 90 percent of your serotonin is made, and then via neurons. So, what is your serotonin? Your happy hormone, right? That's what's going to make you happy or sad, and so that gets sent via neurons mm -hmm. one way to this little brain up there from the big brain in your gut saying, be happy or <laughs> be sad. And that's science, it's a fact, right? Mm. So it is so important that we start feeding our gut good things. And this has happened relatively, you know, in the last 40 years. If you go back and talk to your great grandparents, they would grow things in the garden and then they, like right now, there's lots of courgettes, there's lots of tomatoes, there's lots of chilies, and all of these things, and they would preserve them, wouldn't they? They would ferment them, with, you know, put them in salt and water. Pickle them. And, yep. Pickle them, mm. so that in winter, they could have all those vegetables. And in winter, the winter vegetables, they would pickle those so that they could have them in summer. So they were getting natural... Probiotics. Probiotics <laughs> from from the food that they, they had preserved themselves. But now we don't do that. We just go to the supermarket and we buy all this canned stuff and it's preserved with preservatives, which have E numbers, which basically is like napalming your gut bacteria. Mm. So how many of you know the difference between probiotics and prebiotics? And this is one of Sean's favourite subjects to talk about. It's so interesting, isn't it? You know, do you take probiotic tablets? And, yeah, you know, yeah, what yeah. do they do? Because I think a lot of the time, you know, we hear of probiotics and we hear, oh, it's got 200 billion bacteria and, you know, all this fancy wording and it's just, it's just marketing, right? But there's, there's two different factors. There's your probiotics, which is the actual bacteria, and there's the prebiotics, which is your bacteria food, because pre means before, biotic means biota, which is bacteria, so it's before bacteria. So this is the food for your bacteria, and they are equally as important as the actual probiotics, the actual bacteria that you're putting into your gut. Now, a lot of the probiotic foods are going to contain prebiotics anyway. So when I talk about, when I ever say prebiotics, what I mean is usually plants that we eat that specifically help to grow your good gut bacteria. So when I talk about prebiotics, that's what it is. When I talk about probiotics, what I mean is you're actually putting physical bacteria into your system. And that's the difference between the two. And most people haven't actually heard of prebiotics before because probiotics get all the limelight. They get all the glory when it's the prebiotics that you have the most access to and gives you the most power to control your gut health. And that's mainly what actually we're talking about uh, and going to demonstrate for you today. Yeah. I guess if you had a garden at home, you would fertilise it. And, you know, we all like to have organic gardens, right? So, you know, my sister's got some horses, so they do dungs out of the rear end and you can <laughs> save that and you can dig some into your garden. And that's kind of like fertilising your garden to help things grow better and replenish the soil. Mm. So that would be called a... A prebiotic. Prebiotic. So that's what you're doing to your gut is you're like fertilising it to help all those things grow mm. and be healthy. And modern 
you know, gardening now for these mass producing things, you know, they don't do that enough. And that's why we all want organic now, isn't it? If we possibly could afford it. But because the soil is getting depleted of so many minerals. That's why so many of us are deficient in magnesium. And magnesium is so important for so many things, sleep being one big one, but does so many other things. It's responsible for 300 operations going on in your body. Super, super important. So, But if you're depleting it out of the soil, and then when the vegetables we eat, we're not getting enough magnesium, and then we're having too much sugar and we need magnesium to pro process the sugar in our body. So we're magnesium deficient, but we're deficient of so many things now. Collagen, mm. we're deficient. They believe that most of us are deficient in collagen now. That's why I'm going to do a bone broth today. That's why uh, I am going to do bone broth for the next month to see if it makes a difference. And I'm also going to be giving it to my daughter who's seven because the science says that bone broths are really good for growing children and adults and older people and people with muscle aches mm. and cramps and sore joints that improve skin. I'm going to look younger in a month. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Let's have a drink to the toast to that. Can you guess what we're drinking? What do you reckon that is? We've got two different drinks here. And these are good for our gut. Give you a hint. Cheers. It's not wine. Although... Oh, you don't reckon it's wine? Who reckons <laughs> it's wine? Oh, it smells so good. This is oh, the first time we're both trying it. Mm. All right, I'll put you out of your misery. I am drinking a kefir soda, coffee flavoured. Oh, they're very floral. And it would be delicious with a little bit of vodka. Didn't hear that here. And Sean is drinking also a kefir soda. So they're fizzy. Great drinks. Super, super low in sugar. Like irrelevant amount yeah, of yeah, sugar. Yeah, like irrelevant. This is a beet and berry. Check out the colour of beet and berry. So mm. drinking kefir is going to help. Yeah, okay. it's, right. it's just another, it's an example of a probiotic food that you can have. And the awesome thing about a probiotic food, so if we're going to list a few, there's like the kefir, you can get kombucha, um, tempeh, natto, uh, all these probiotic foods, they contain a larger variety of bacteria than a probiotic supplement a lot of the time. So there's a lot of, a lot of benefit to that and actually help you to digest your, uh, your food better as well. And it's something you should have, it doesn't have to be every day, but just semi-regularly. These are two brand new flavours, and we're the first to try them. They've just come out. Oh, really? They do, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they do a ginger and a blush at the moment. <laughs> um, we don't normally say the brands, but it's the wild fermentary. Uh, they're awesome. So this is the beet and berry. But, mm. you know, we're talking about a drink because one of the interesting things, and, in, you know, we know in New Zealand we consume a lot of alcohol, Alcohol hole is a prime cause for poor gut bacteria. Excess alcohol is not good yep. for gut bacteria. A beer is bad news for it in yeah, particular. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's one thing. So there's a, there's a drink idea that you could have a little splash or two of vodka for mm. special occasions in there, but I know kids love the ginger and the blush one mm. as well. So instead of giving them a fizzy drink or instead, of, you know, an orange juice is not going to be great for them. There's as much sugar in an orange juice as there is in a Coca-Cola. So if you think you're doing your kid a favor by giving them an orange juice, you're not really. Mm. Yes, it's a natural sugar, but it's just as sweet. Yeah. Can and talk about that? Like if, if you're looking for a... You know, like a yummy drink to have because you like to have, you know, you know, your drinks after work and everything. But and and you know, you're trying to either cut down on alcohol or you want to replace the fizzy drinks or replace the fruit juices. This is a really good option because, you know, you, you still have the the nice colour, uh, you still have a really nice like floral and fruity flavour, uh, but you're not getting the sugars and you're also supplying yourself with, uh, you know, the bonus to your gut health. So 
it would be a really, really good replacement if you're looking to make some improvements to your, your health, specifically gut health, um, simply by changing out whatever you're drinking normally with something like this. So there are cultured soy milks and th cultured milks that can be great for mm -hmm. it. Um, in fact, I had a new product here. I don't. I wasn't. I just thought about it. This um, Raglan yogurt have done this wonderful. That I just got this the other day. It's a probiotic kefir as well. But this is uh, elderflower and lime, done from uh, the Raglan guys who do Raglan coconut yogurt, and they've got a range of flavors. So another thing, and in the morning, great if you're. One of those people that have cereal, then perhaps some of that over it, mm. or in a smoothie, fantastic, really good for your gut. Good on top of your oats as well, if you're having overnight oats. Yeah, if you're doing overnight oats, and we're going to talk about that. Let's just um, talk about this little guy here. This is uh, garlic, right? Garlic is so, so good for us. One of the biggest fighters against cancer, right? Do you want to talk about garlic for it? Yeah, for yeah, mark? sure. I mean, I like I'm I'm biased because I love garlic so much. I will literally eat like an entire two or three of these completely soaked, you know, in olive oil with a if it was like a roast or something. Now, garlic. I'll talk about garlic together with onion and the onion family, like leeks and and whatnot. These are the first of what I would say the prebiotic foods, which are really practical. You can have all the time, uh, and is a very potent way to increase your gut health. Sorry. And the reason is, so there are different kinds of prebiotics, okay, the bacteria food. There's a specific one called inulin, that's not insulin, it's inulin. And it's a type of prebiotic, it's very potent for your gut bacteria, they love to eat it. And because onion, garlic, leeks, they contain a lot of it, uh, it helps promote a lot of the good bacteria growth. But you get a double win because when you have these, especially so with garlic, they also contain factors that actually inhibit the growth of bad bacteria as well. So you're, you get, it's a win-win. You're, you're able to provide growth for your good bacteria. Thumbs up, awesome, more serotonin. Uh, more good bacteria, you're going to feel great, but at the same time, you're hindering the growth of the bad bacteria. So all the downsides that they give you get deleted. In the New Zealand diet, we don't have enough garlic. If you go to countries, in particular the Mediterranean, where they live a lot longer and have about 30% less cancer than we do in New Zealand, you'll find they eat a lot of garlic. Now, this is the garlic that I showed you before, and I put the whole thing into the bone broth that I made yesterday. And I'm, now, just if you look here, you can just squeeze it out, right? Now that, if we literally just squeeze all that out, you can see I've got this beautiful garlic, garlic puree. Mm. Now I'm gonna put this that's left, I'm gonna put it into the bone broth. I've got a pork bone broth over there. Not and there's a little bit left in the other end there. I'm just squeezing it out. Now, if I just now drizzle a little extra virgin olive oil in there, just a little bit. We don't have enough of that in our diet either. It's a great antioxidant. And now I'll put just, can you hold that up then? Just show them. And I'm going to yeah. put it's a lot of garlic. Just a little bit of uh, pink salt in there. There we go. And then I'm going to put a little bit of cracked pepper in there, just a little bit. And now I'm just going to mix that up. And suddenly you've got something super healthy that can be a spread. And it will take it. You could get some white beans and you could puree some white beans up. How long did you cook this in the broth for? So the, I cooked the broth for between 12 and 16 hours, the bone broth. And now you've got this beautiful garlic paste that you could cover with olive oil and keep it in the fridge. But literally, you could have a spoonful of it like this. And I'll try it on Sean in a moment. But... And it's not... 
because it's been cooking in the bone broth, the stinkiness will have gone. But like, look, you'd think a big spoon of garlic like that, but you try that and you tell them what it tastes like. That on a cracker, on a oh, wow. healthy like, seed cracker, like, on a celery yeah, stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's smooth. It, there's, there's no, um, there's no bite to it. There's no yeah. sharp no, no, garlic. No, no, no. no, it's really, it's almost like a, a hummus or, or yeah. something. So I just put, when I put the, and I'm going to show you because I'm going to demonstrate making a bone broth. I'm going to be doing a chicken bone broth. I've got a pork bone broth on there, but it's just, I literally cut the end off and I throw that whole thing and then it sits in there cooking in the bone broth for hours and hours, but so, so good for us. We need to include more garlic in our diet. Easy peasy. All right. So let's, you talked about how good onions are. Yep. Okay. Same, same thing as garlic. Fantastic prebiotic. So whenever I'm having, doing a salad, I always try and get some red onions and I Perfect. chop them up and I put the red onions in there raw. And the other thing I always like to put in with other salads is a um, sauerkraut. Now that's probably going to come as no news to you guys about sauerkraut yeah. being great for gut health. But the first time I tasted sauerkraut, I thought it was absolutely awful. But really? Was, yeah. <laughs> Um, there are so many different flavors. So this is a Mexi kraut, and it has olive, um, lemon verbena in it. It's a, obviously it's a wild culture. And so, sometimes when you open these jars, they'll they'll fizz a little bit. And some people think, oh my god, it's off. No, it's alive and it's doing <laughs> its thing. And then when you get it into you, it's going to be so good. So like I'll sprinkle it over salads. It's a mixed one. You can make uh, sauerkrauts out of all sorts of things. Mm. Every supermarket has sauerkraut now. Um, there are so many options with flavour. This, that, like having sauerkraut in your fridge, is I think one of the easiest ways to, like a practical way, very simple way to go about improving your gut health. Because the more probiotic foods you can have in your diet, you know, more often, the more you're replenishing those gut bacteria and aiding your digestion. Something like this, like how often will you just have a meal and then you can just pull out some of this and just get a big tablespoon and just put it on the side? Yeah, I right. just, I tend to sprinkle it over yeah, things yeah, just, or just I'll, adding it in. Uh, when it comes to my daughter, I hide it so she doesn't know it's there and yeah. then I'll put like an avocado puree, like a guacamole over the top or mm. something mm. and it will just become a crunch. But when you're shopping for these things, if you can be looking for things that said, live culture, wild culture, probably that will be back to front there, but that's what you want to see on the label. That means it's really fermented and it is going to be really good for your gut. Miso paste. So the Japanese, you know, they eat a lot of raw fish, high fatty raw fish like tuna mm. and salmon and sardines and mackerel and things like that. Lots of really good omegas in there. But they also are right into the miso mm. paste and fermented soya beans. And how healthy are the Japanese? Exactly. Like, they have some of the best gut health oh, in the world. In incredible. Just as a, as a culture, as a whole country, some of the healthiest people. So that's miso paste just bought from the store. So maybe you want to talk about buying misos. Um, but I'm going to get a little bit of hot water. I'm going to show you how quick it is to make a really nice miso. Mm. I think the only thing I would really say about the miso paste is the, the more simple the formula, the better. Because generally all you really want to see on the ingredients is things that you can understand, what they actually say, or what they actually are. So for example, this one just says soybeans, GM free, so it's genetic modification free, uh, rice and salt. So chucking this in is awesome because you're not getting all these, these extras. So the more simple, uh, the better. But for the most part, a lot of the misos are going to be very similar. Uh, so it's more just a preference of which, which one you like after trying. So I've just got one. a cup of hot water there, and it's a small cup actually, and I've got like not even a teaspoon of the miso, and I'm just gonna put that into some hot water. We don't even need to boil it, and I'm just gonna mix it up in here, and then you can put whatever you like in there. I mean, I've got, I've got some very thinly sliced shiitake mushrooms. You could throw those in there without even cooking them. 
I've got some edamame beans straight out of the freezer from the supermarket. Can you just pull that hair off there? What? There's a hair there. Right. There we go, so a couple of those. I've got a little bit of uh, thinly sliced ginger, just fresh ginger that's just going in there. And you know, that's a soup right there. It's that fast and if the, the mushroom is thinly sliced, you don't even need to cook it. And the flavours of the ginger, but you, you have a taste of that, Sean, and see see what you how, think. But how hot is it? Because I have a very sensitive tongue. I, I burn my tongue far more than I ah, really. it's not too hot. So what, what I'm trying to show here is that miso is fantastic. Miso and dressings mixed with a little bit of olive oil, a touch of tamari sauce, a little bit of water mixed in there as well, some ginger grated mm. in. And suddenly you've got a miso ginger dressing for a salad. So, you know, it's kind of the secret ingredient that you can have in your fridge ready go at a moment's notice, but it's going to be really good for your gut bacteria. Mm. Tempeh, fermented soybeans, Shri tempeh is fantastic in Auckland. Um, and that's a great thing, you can just slice tempeh. It comes like a cake, you buy it frozen, and it's in a Ziploc bag and you take it out and you just slice it. I don't have any because we had it for dinner the other night. Um, and then I just put some Indian seasoning or some Mexican seasoning on, um, a little bit of oil in the pan and fry it. Some people use it for burgers. So tempeh is really good. Uh, it's gr great in salads, especially if you maybe do a little bit of halloumi cheese and fry that off as well, squeaky cheese. Yeah, does that make sense? Anyway, you carry on talking about if, if we don't look after our gut health, what are the things that are going to happen? What, 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 what can go wrong in our bodies if we just have this poor gut health? We get depressed, right? Yeah, we yeah. We get so sad. There's, there's your mood. Can, can I get a little bit nerdy? Go for it. All right, cool. So, like I said, if your engine isn't working well, you're not going to be in a very good state. Now, some things that can go really wrong and you see it a lot of time with like brain fog, low energy, uh, irritability, uh, bloating, um, your blood tests come back far more negative than they should. Uh, all of this generally stems from the, uh, a few things that happen in the gut. And mainly I'm talking about when you don't have enough good bacteria and you have too much bad. Uh, and maybe you're supplying too many inflammatory things to the, to the gut. So one, your gut lining can develop what's called a leaky gut syndrome. You may have heard of that already, and it is exactly what it sounds like. You literally develop a bunch of really small holes in the, in the gut, and you know what passes through your digestive system. You don't want that leaking out into the rest of your body, which is exactly what happens. So of course you're not going to feel very well from that, and obviously there are repercussions from that. Uh, some of the things being the, they call it inflammatory cytokines that get up here and make you feel depressed. Uh, there's also things that cause your cholesterol to raise. Uh, the gut lining itself, the mucus layer, that thins down. So what happens is your body actually starts attacking your gut bacteria, the good and the bad, because they get too close together. So you get a whole bunch of inflammation. And that inflammation in the gut travels up to the brain, and that's when you get brain fog. So you can see it's a huge cascade of really negative effects on our health, which is completely avoidable. Completely avoidable if you just take a few practical steps, just like some of the things we've talked about so far, putting the prebiotics in, putting the probiotics in, uh, switching out a few things here and there. It doesn't have to be, you know, something you're obsessed with for your entire life. It just has to be little additions that you can make to help your good bacteria as much as you can to avoid a lot of the downsides um, that can come with it because they can be quite severe so it is a little i am being a little bit serious here which i don't normally like to do but the downsides of poor gut health are pretty severe and there are consequences for that but the good news is you can turn it around really really quickly because how fast bacteria multiply how fast your gut lining repairs you can get great gut health quite quickly they'd say by um getting stuck into bone broth mm. three times Great a day, start. having Great start. Yep. You, you'll notice a difference in a week. Yep. Yep. It's yep. incredible, right? Um, getting more fiber into your diet is really important. 
And you know, they say that by just getting an extra 10 grams of fiber in, to your diet a day is going to reduce your risk of all sorts of horrible things going on down the track. As, as, as far, and some people even say that it'll increase your lifespan mm. by 20% if over a long period of time you get an extra 10 grams of fiber in your diet. And it's quite easy to do that. Just one small cup of raspberries is just about 10 grams of fiber. But there's lots of ways to get, to get fiber into your diet. Perhaps you could talk about that. But you know, the one good thing is a bit of chocolate's good for you, right? If you have high cocoa percentage, mm. so you need to be having chocolate, but not a whole bar of it, yeah, right? Yeah. So we're not. So we're not saying you know splurge on dairy milk chocolate. We're saying you know have a bit of the dark chocolate because that's that's real chocolate, right? I know there's going to a few people here who are going to crucify me for saying that, but real chocolate is the dark stuff. The it has to be a bit bitter. The high cacao percentage. That's the stuff that is awesome for you. Super high antioxidants, which is a lot of what your bacteria love to feed on uh, and remove a lot of what we call damage throughout the body because of these antioxidants, which basically means it is anti-aging. I know there's a bunch of stuff out there about anti-aging creams and everything. A lot of it is because it's full of antioxidants, which just slows down cellular damage. Bottom line. Uh, so cacao is one of the highest antioxidant foods. Uh, which means that dark chocolate is actually very good for you. There you go, there's one bonus. But that means 70% cocoa and more, right? I would even say 70% is good. 85% and up is where I would class it as therapeutic. A snack, right? When you To throw a bunch of these in your car and whenever you feel like a snack, I can open it. No, you need scissors. Do you want me to open yeah, it? you open that. Yeah. I don't think it's that hard, really. <laughs> and you can talk about how good apples are, how good chia seeds are, and we'll show you an overnight oats that we made and talk to well, you about that. We're at um, almost 40 minutes here. Maybe we should start. I'll start showing. cooking. Show, yeah, show them yeah. that, yeah. All right, so these are little seaweed snacks that you can get called Nora. Uh, here's an example of the packaging. Um, and this is exactly what I was talking about uh, before, like with prebiotics. I, I wish, a part, part of like, if I was gonna have a dream, people would eat more seaweed because it's super light. Uh, no one got fat off seaweed, I'm, I'm promising you that. Um, extremely good for the gut. As a prebiotic, it has the same effects as garlic and onion where it stops the growth or hinders the growth of the bad bacteria as well. It's awesome for your immune system and it's delicious and very, very easy to, uh, to get your hands on. Can I have one of these? I'm yeah, have go for it. Well, we could make mm. some... Um, so I'll just eat these as like a snack, literally almost every day. Um, also, if you have... I don't want to get into this too much, but if you have uh, like a slower metabolism, maybe depending on the issues with the thyroid, uh, it can be really good because it's very, very high in iodine as well. Uh, so it's good at little metabolic booster uh, on the side. All right, making bone broth is incredibly easy to do and it is not expensive. And you can make it expensive or you can make it really cheap. Um, I bought uh, one kilo of chicken for $16.50 today. That's, a, that's pretty cheap, right? But it is... Chicken feet! So that's the cheapest way. So you could use chicken feet. That's the cheapest way to do it. I just got it from like a little um, uh, store that's specialized in chicken. Um, but I also, for the one I made the day before, I bought a $20 pack of, uh, so this is the expensive way to do it, of chicken wings. And I used chicken wings. And then I collected all the meat, which is around somewhere, that... I got off it, so I was left with a whole whole bunch of meat as well. But let's just talk about what we can do here to make a bone broth really quickly. So let's get the camera off, and then I'm going to we'll come over here. Sean's going to play cameraman, and then we are going to see what he thinks of it. I'm going to turn it into, let's have a little look here. 
So here we go, I've got some ingredients here and I'm gonna turn a really cool bone broth into something amazing. And I've got these noodles here. Have you seen these noodles before? Instead of using carbohydrate noodle, I am gonna use these guys. Just mushrooms. Get them from Countdown. How cool is that? All right, so let's go over here. So I've got some chicken feet. Well, do you, do you, want me to you, you hold, hold that. I want in. you to show them these ingredients here. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to fill this, just have a little look in this pot. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up with some water. And I'm going to get those cooking. And... So we've got, here we've got ginger. Garlic, garlic, and I've got onion. some stalks left from mushrooms that I've kept, just an onion sliced up. What do they call this? Uh, there's a funny little comic they called celery the toothbrush for the colon. There you go, <laughs> celery there, <laughs> some <laughs> carrot, and I've got some apple cider vinegar. So I've got one kilo here, and I am going to do a proper YouTube video of making this. So just some cold water in here. I want to bring them up to the boil. As soon as they hit the boil, there'll be a little bit of scum come to the top. I'm literally going to get rid of all that water, and then I'm going to top it up with water again, and then I'm going to put all these ingredients in. Now, bone broths can be incredibly boring, or they can be really, really good. So this one here that I'm making over here, just give it a little stir up. Oh, wow. Well, this is good. pork bones. It's a really cheap way to go. Just bought the pork bones. And by adding the apple cider vinegar in, what that does is that gets all the collagen, helps get the collagen out of the bone. So that's really important. And, and the minerals as well. To get all the minerals yeah, out. to get all the minerals, yeah. And I've used, it's important, well, I think it's important that the apple cider vinegar with the mother, and you can sort of see it floating down there floating so always give it a good shake and I'm using quarter of a cup in this pot here I will do a recipe so here is some bone broth that I made yesterday you can freeze it into bags like that I just took it out before I'm going to heat this up really quickly and show you how quick and easy it is that is frozen we'll get that heating up and then I'm going to start to put some of these other ingredients. And I think I know about stocks, right? I've been making <laughs> stocks for a while. I've done a lot of research on this stock business. And so bone broth is super, super good for us. When I make my stocks, I only use meat. And this is a concentrate. It makes eight cups or two litres. But what we're talking about here is trying to get collagen in. And that's why we want to use the bones and we want to cook it for a minimum of 12 hours. So I will let this just tick away on a low heat. If you've got a slow cooker, I don't have a slow cooker, then really so great to put on there. What is in this one? Is that the ingredients that you So have? it's exactly the same ingredients, but I've got peppercorns in there, and but it's all the same ingredients, and this will stay on overnight. It's all falling apart, and wow. then I will strain that off tomorrow, and it will look similar to this one here. I, this is a Moroccan pork broth, so I put two tablespoons of my Moroccan seasoning in there. But you know, you can put whatever seasonings, you can put herbs. But what I'm trying to get people is to experiment. So here this has come up to the heat here. So I am going to start putting some things in. I've got some shiitake mushrooms. Buy them from Crown Countdown. They come like that, the exotic by South, really fantastic. So I've just sliced them up thinly. They're going in. I've got some of the chicken that I picked off the bones from the, that, from, the, from the actual broth, bone broth. So I'm going to get a little bit of chicken in there. And I've got some prawns, which are going to go in at the last minute. I'm just going to cut up some chili. Over here, if you have a look over here, Sean, so just a little bit of red chilli. Now, these aren't super hot, so that's going to be enough. And I want a little bit of colour in there as well. So I'm going to get that in now. That's come up to the heat. It's boiling. I've got some edamame beans that come straight out of the freezer, out of the bag. I've got some thinly sliced ginger. 
going to go in there. You could literally make this in advance and freeze mm. it. I've got some Thai basil here, some Thai basil leaves. I'm just going to thinly slice these up. I'm going to roll them up like that, a little roll. There we go. Throw that in. I'm going to put about a quarter of a teaspoon of fish sauce in there. That's enough. And now some coconut cream, sorry, coconut milk goes in there. The last little ingredient. A little lemon, lime rather, lime. and I've got a little squeeze of some lime to go in. And literally, if I put the prawns in now, Alrighty, well, that's all pretty awesome. Maybe you're not a chicken feet person, but you can essentially use any uh, animal parts that you know have the bones. Uh, this is just a really cheap way of doing it. It's still, you know, chicken is chicken. Now let me flip you around. Here we go, I've got, so now I'm gonna put the noodles in. So I'm using the mushrooms, noodles going in there. Just have a little sound issue there, there we go. So, now I haven't put any salt in, and I never put so salt in the bone broth until it's the time when I'm actually going to, just before I'm going to eat it, or drink it, because I want to taste it and see what it's like. So, mm. I've got some of that pink salt there, a little bit in there. And really, the prawns are only going to take like about one minute bubbling away there. And this is going to be a delicious soup. But you could make this up, have it in a bag, in the freezer, all done. You could take it to work, take it out, get it into a microwave and heat it up. And this is a fantastic way to have a bone broth. And we're going to let Sean taste it in a minute. And um, Lucky me. Uh, so this is what's taken all of... Two minutes, three minutes to put it together. Ah. Minutes, uh... That chili has got a little bit more spice than I thought. I do love Just a little bit. So, but that soup is done, right? right it is done. Let's check it out. So, let me just, there it is. There you go. Oh, fantastic. And you can make something like this in really big batches as well. So you could you could prepare this, you know, liters of it um, for, for soups to take to work. Yep. You know, great for kids to take away. There we go. So suddenly, and you've got all those enoki mushrooms in there. Oh, wow. And I've still got heaps left. That was one cup of bone broth. And let's get some coriander in there. That is going to be Sean's one, but I think that's going to be pretty good. Does that look good? Looks pretty fantastic to me. All right, so is just let's have a look over here quickly. See how this is this, it's just coming up to the boil here. Mm. So this would happen whether it's pork bones, beef bones, or the chicken. I'm using chicken feet because it's the cheapest way to do it. So now I'm just literally going to strain that off, get rid of it. There we go. Now I'm going to top it with some cold water. And then I will put all the other ingredients in. I might just... There we go. There we go. That'll be enough. I'll come with some more afterwards. So I just really want them to see. So I've got the heat on again, so I've got some celery. Now, if you've got trimmings left of any vegetables, just start throwing them into a Ziploc bag and keep them in the freezer. So like and then just keep, yeah, just and... off cuts of your vegetables. Mm. Definitely not potatoes, maybe not broccoli, but you know, things like leeks, onions, carrots, um, celery, the leaves from celery. So there's some celery going in. Here we go, that's a whole 
clove, the whole garlic going in there. And then I've just got some stalks of mushrooms that I'd saved up. I've got the carrots going in. And now, and also, here's the apple cider vinegar going in. And I'm going to leave this to sit for 30 minutes before I turn the heat on. And that's just going to let it do its thing with getting in to get that collagen out of the bones. I've got the ginger pieces. I've got the... I haven't even bothered peeling it, don't need to, but the ginger adds the chicken, and when you taste that soup over there, will be delicious with the chicken. The onion goes in, and then literally I'll just top that with water, I'll get it so it's just gently bubbling, about that sort of speed over here, can you see how this is bubbling here? Just ticking away, just ticking, and I will leave that overnight. So that's pretty much the same thing, except I put some Moroccan seasoning in it. Mm. This morning I gave my daughter a, um, a little bowl of the chicken bone broth, and she wasn't too keen on it. So I tried a little bit of the coconut milk with it, and just a pinch of my Indian seasoning, and suddenly she was happy to drink it. But for kids, you Google it, and you see how good it is for bone broth. If you've got joint pains, if you're a little bit older, trust me, you will notice a difference, or so they tell me. I've never done bone broth before. I'm starting for one month, so check back. They say it improves skin. They say you get really, really healthy with it. I've been playing around with them. I've now perfected it. I will do a proper video, but I just wanted to show you guys, if you want to look after your gut, you know some really good foods. Shall I hold the camera? You can have a taste of that soup. And Fantastic. Oh. There you go. You have a little... I'll, I'll take go. over, cameraman. Sorry about that. This is a, a live, isn't it? Here he is, the man himself. Four <laughs> wheels of health. Guru is going to try my soup. I'm going to be... And uh, it's yeah. literally made I very quickly. This. Even might look at that. You know the funny thing? I'm actually, uh, I have that gene that makes coriander taste like soap. So I'm going to avoid the coriander. Okay, yeah, but some people don't like coriander, right? And that chili is a little bit hotter than I expected. So I, like, I love hot food though. Boring. So. All right, give it a whirl. I hope you guys have um, learned mm. a few things that you can include in your diet. We, we spend mm. a whole week, well, Sean spends a whole week on the Four Wheels of Health course just educating on gut health. It's not one quick little video. It's one week we concentrate on it. Do you want to tell them a little bit about the Four Wheels of Health course? Because that's made, a, well, you eat, but I'll tell them. Mm. Nice thousands. It's a four-week course that's run on Facebook. And actually, there's a course starting in two days. And you tell them, thousands of people, they lose a lot of weight, they get better sleep. People that can't sleep suddenly start sleeping. Yeah, so obviously, you know, some and stuff we both love everything to do with health and gut health is, I, I have a bias, it is my favorite for sure. Uh, however, when it comes to the course, we, we go far more in depth into this, we go into sleep, we go into timed eating, nutrition, uh, really down the rabbit hole of essentially teaching as many people as we can how to take care of their bodies. Because like I said, your body is your vehicle, right? And your gut is your engine. And you need to learn how to take care of all its components. This is the stuff that we should have learned in school. Am I right? Yeah. Well, we, should, that... we should be learning this stuff when we're kids and we never get taught. So, you know, learn about it for yourself. Mm. Learn about it for your kids, you know, the people close to you. And you empower yourself to take care of your own health long term, basically. Uh, it just takes four weeks. Ask, ask 100 people how they sleep. How many people get seven to eight hours sleep? And if you're not getting to seven to eight hours sleep a night, what are you doing to your health long term? Will you get Alzheimer's? Will you die younger? Yeah, yeah. Are you more at risk of having a heart attack or a stroke? Anyway, that's enough sort of rave on about that. I'm going to flip this around here so you can see us both again. But the Four Wheels of Health is run on Facebook. There's a course starting in two days. Yeah, start Saturday. It's a lot of fun. Yep. Fourwheelsofhealth.com if you're interested. But got to give the man a plug because he's come along to 
talk to us about <laughs> gut health. All the way and, out here. You know, like I'm an old guy, right? He's a young guy and uh, it's really hot in here, I have to say. But check back with me in a month and see if my skin improves by having bone broth for a month. I think you should also talk about give it up for gut cancer. Yeah. Because that is it's a fantastic it's thing I going on. To so, yeah. Okay, so really pay attention. There's this awesome new charity in New Zealand. Uh, it's a foundation, a Gut Cancer Foundation. And they're doing what's called a give it up challenge. It's for a month. Uh, it started start of March. And it's basically you just pick something to give up for a month. Uh, normally it's going to be a sugar, alcohol, or the sofa, so you're exercising more. Um, and all of the money raised goes towards research for gut cancer. So they're funding a lot of different studies. Uh, each one, you know, they have to put forward a lot of money in order to get the research done. But it is important. There are a lot of people, especially in New Zealand, that suffer from problems to do with gut health and some really serious ones. So the research is always going to be important. And you never know when you or someone else close to you is going to end up in that boat. So it's important to uh, help support so check out uh, the Gut Cancer Foundation Give It Up Challenge as well. Very, yeah. very cool uh, yeah. charity. Yeah, yeah, and it's a really new really charity cool. too. So, And it's nice, like you say, to support people. It's all very well to say it's a great idea, but then when mm. suddenly you want it, you maybe wish that you did support them a little bit more. Hey, join in the chat below. Love you to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell button, all those things you do. That was the sales pitch. I hope you found it interesting. Mm. Uh, kind of a fun thing to do. We just thought the other day, hey, let's put it out there. And uh, hopefully somebody takes away just one little snippet. Look out for the videos mm. I'm going to do on making bone broths, proper and videos. I tell you what, if, if you really enjoyed this and you found it interesting and it's something you want to know more about and you want to have more information throw it in the comments let us know because if, if you guys absolutely loved this kind of uh, content then we can do more you know we, we just need to know that you're, you're loving it yeah well that's why we love people to join in the chat right get it get chatting below tell us what you think sometimes somebody some people say some stuff we don't like and <laughs> Accuse me of promoting canola oil and things like that, which I've never done in my life. But anyway, it's all good. And we love you guys. Thanks for coming along to watch. And hopefully we'll do another one of these sometimes. Alrighty. Take care, everybody. See you later.